Hello guys, um, so this is tutorial number 9 on array lists. Uh, if you have seen the tutorial that um, we just did, number 8, um, it covers um, arrays that is one way of building um, collections. We're going to see a different approach um, doing array lists. Um, in some cases it's more convenient to use arrays and other array lists and we can talk about uh, that decision um, over some other tutorials but I want you guys to know a few different techniques um, and what are the um, possibilities of it so we're gonna start again from the same example that we had in tutorial number seven where we built our first uh, class it's a bouncing ball right so this case um, we're gonna do exactly the same but structure it a little bit different we're gonna remove um, the two different instances of the class um, even the first one as well and we're gonna define something called an array list right so in this case um, we're gonna call this array list ball collection um, so ball collection we're gonna say equals new array list right so what is the difference between an array and an array list um, an array defines at the beginning the size of um, this container this um, this collection we we specify a number like 20 or 100 and that's the size of the array the interesting thing about the array list is that we can call it a dynamic array it's a, it starts being an empty uh, bag and we can dynamically include elements to the array list um, so we will see how to do that um, here we could use the keyword uh, add ball collection dot add um, and this is the keyword that will allow us uh, to add elements to this collection right so we're gonna say we're gonna open parentheses and what goes inside these parentheses here we have to specify uh, um, a class an instance of a class so here we could say from the class ball we can call it whatever um, like my ball equals new ball we're gonna use the same thing that we did in the previous tutorial, I use a random but for now we're just gonna use 200 comma 200 right so we're doing a new instance of the class and we can here say my ball we are adding that instance to our array list right um, so we have this uh, structure done like that. Now we have to, we can literally um, run, we need to run the first element of this array list. So how do we get that guy? Um, so we can say ball, my ball equals um, from the class ball. Sorry, ball collection dot get element zero. And my ball dot run. What are we saying here? We're saying call this uh, instance of the class my ball to the element zero of this ball collection. Right? So this ball collection, we know that it contains only one element and we are saying uh, call that element zero, something like my ball, so we can run it. Is this is just a temporary name. This is just a temporary name for, um, for this instance, so we can actually call it functionality. Um, so let's see if that's working. Okay, that's good. 
So the next step is to again use the structure of a for loop to increase uh, the size of this collection as much as we want. So we're going to say for integer i equals zero, i smaller than here could be a hundred, right? Could be anything, and i plus plus. So we're going to generate a hundred elements and each one of them will be located again in a random position between the zero and the white and then again the position again will be random between zero and two hundred. Right? So far so good, we're generating a hundred elements um, and all of them are being stored in the collection. So now the collection has a hundred elements. We need to be able to uh, call each one of them again through another for loop. So I'm going to copy this time this one that I wrote over here and close it. Same thing and we're going to use this instead of getting just the element zero we're gonna get the element i so this line of code maybe is the most uh, complex in in the structure that we're using here uh, it basically as i said is is calling we can use any name here but um it's calling my ball the instance of the class uh, ball my ball to that element i that we're getting from the collection so it could be the element zero it could be the element one two three four till 100. In this case, because we have 100 elements, we can call 100 elements. Um, so let's see how this runs. So again, this is the minimum structure that we need to actually articulate um, this array list. But we're not really mm, seeing the power of that um, array list. Uh, Let's see what would be the difference, something that we can't really do with uh, arrays. Let's say that this um, idea of adding an element to the class, to the collection, we don't want to do it um, just at the beginning of the script, but we want to do it every frame. Let's say every frame we want to add one element to the screen. Right, so we're gonna add these two lines here. What is what are we saying here? Each frame generate a new element in a random position of the screen. We can actually, uh, yeah, let's leave it like that. So each frame we're gonna add a new element, but because this the size of the array now it's dynamic, it's gonna start with zero elements and we'll start increasing every frame. We want to be able to, again, um, use some structure here that will say run as many elements as you have. A hundred is not as many, uh, how many elements we have, it's just a random number, right? So we need to be able to specify that in a more clever way. So if we use ball collection dot size in this case, if you remember the length function of the array, this is a similar thing we need to say dot size and in this case we use parentheses in the array version we don't this is exactly like saying I don't know how big you are as a collection but go from the element zero till uh, the last one go through all of them and run them so let's see what are we getting we might right so we're duplicating the variable my ball we're gonna call in this case mb right could be called anything because this is just a temporary uh, name that we're giving so we're seeing that every frame we are adding new elements to the screen that will become maybe more clear if we make them in the center of this screen instead of in a random value so we can see that we are generating elements from here every frame every frame, every frame. Um, at this time we might want to produce something a little bit more interesting than this. So 
how can we define um, something a little bit different? And uh, what if we define the speed in x and y as random minus one comma one? And same thing for the y direction. What are we saying here? Each element that we're adding to the screen will start with a random speed. A random speed that goes from negative 1 to 1. Negative 1 we know that it will make them move in the left direction, positive 1 will be in the right direction. Um, the similar thing with the y direction, so will be up or down depending on the value that we generate from these two random uh, functions. So let's see what we get out of that. So in this case we're generating all this, uh, these balls are starting with uh, random velocity. We can increase the speed to something like 4 and we can see how this will change our system. Again, I will leave it in something like maybe 2. We could include a few other things that maybe particles would die after a while. Um, but we can see that Again, the idea of um, the power of the array list is that it's a dynamic array, that it's something that we started with nothing and eventually we keep, keep adding and adding elements to it. And this structure of this for loop allows us to call the function run to each one of them, no matter how big this array list is.